This coming decade will be seen as the decade of change that defines and shapes the next 100,000 years. This decade will be even more important than development in the past 2,000 years. It will transition us from a world somewhat like the 20th century to a science fiction world, but a science fiction world where we're richer and more capable than all those old stories. Two critical technologies will change our world more than you realize. There'll be a rapid shift to self-driving cars, and then human and robots will be developed self-driving car technology. How we move and build things is fundamental to our economy and our wealth. And these will change both how we move and how we do things. The size of our GDP economy, world economy, is the number of things that we do, number of transactions, times the average size of those transactions. So if we move faster, build faster, then we have more transactions and thus we get richer. So this is so basic to what we'll be able to do is that if we can do things faster and cheaper, then we get richer by, by definition of how we define wealth. This will be a bigger impact than the internet because the internet and the digital economy is on top of the physical world. It can speed things up in terms of like the, the, some of the, how the interactions happen in terms of the, the overhead, but in terms of like the fundamental speed of things, it often doesn't impact that. So we will expand the speed and, and scale of the physical world by changing how we move and how we do things. So the next, next starting next year will be the most pivotal in, in human history. It will create economic changes that will dwarf the 30 times world GDP growth that happened mostly over the 20th century. So in order to understand how self-driving cars and human bots will make us rich, we have to understand how the train and car made us rich over the last 200 years. When did things happen and how did things change? And I will simplify that so that you can see clearly those impacts and why the, the new technologies will, will be so, so powerful. People know the cars and trains are important, but they don't understand the history of the economic impacts. First, let's go back in time to the start of the 19th century. America had just been founded. There are some steam train engines, but for tiny applications, we have some water wheels. Sh ships, horses, bicycles, walking, that's mostly what the people are doing. There's horses pulling wagons, and then horses pulling barges down canals and, and along rivers, so we can move certain heavier objects. Then there's railway mania that occurs from 1836 to 1845. Although the steam train was first invented in 1804, it took time for people to understand that it was fully superior. There were tests made, the technology had to improve a great deal. And there was a difficulty of making the rail, the rail line, putting two steel bars and putting slats in between is a very difficult uh, infrastructure to create. So it took some time and that emergence where they started proving a lot of trains and, and building railroads was from 1836 to 1945. There was a growth from 30 miles of line up to over a thousand um, miles of line over the course of those 10 years. And then by 1850, there were 9,000 miles of rail built in the United States and also a lot in, in England. By 1880, the U.S. had about 18,000 locomotives carrying 23,000 tons of freight and 22,000 passenger cars. The U.S. railroad industry was the largest employer outside of the agricultural sector. And we can move 100 times more stuff over land in its interior, not just down river. So it reshaped our cities and, and where we lived and what we did worked. Economically, it was seven times cheaper to move a ton of, of material, of goods, on land in 1850 versus 1800. 1850 on, on train, 1800 with a covered wagon, you know, pulling with a team of horses. It was 14 times cheaper to move a ton of goods with a steamboat in 1850 versus 1800 when, when there, there was no proper way to move down a, a river uh, unless it was you were flowing with it and the wind was blowing in, in your direction. So rail and steam technology were a technology stack, right? Where you have steam engine, on top of that, you build the movement of, of ships and, and, and rail. So it was a part of an energy transportation industry manufacturing set of, of changes and, and capabilities. So you had coal powering rail and ships, 
large scale plants and scaling up cargo manufacturing factories. You do not have mass production yet, but you could make bigger factories. You could move more stuff. So you could build bigger. So tiny uh, areas where you'd have a little bit of uh, textiles, where you have some textile workers, became very large buildings and machines powering them. So things just got bigger and bigger. You got, you know, you got scale. That's what was the transformation that and that the the train enabled, and also the the uh, technology to build bigger engines. But and before that, you had a transition from you know pre seventeen fifty had streams, some water wheels, small scale hydro, and they could make them big hydro. Hydroelectric dams came, you know, the big Hoover dams came later because you had the capability to move a lot of cement and steel. So being able to make those things big was what was happened with the rail technology. And that's why we it made us 10 times richer. It made sell a lot used to build things faster and cheap. We could start moving things cheaper, like I said, seven times cheaper of a land. So by 1900, the rail system was mostly between the US, UK, and several parts of Europe. But the foundation of that change, of that century, was that 1836 to 1845 explosion of building rail, where, where the technology was proven, the costs were driven down, companies and the industry at scale. To so how about the car? The big decade for the car was 1911 to 1921. That's when the U.S. went from very few cars to forward mass production and getting to, you know, a car to 35% of households. And again, you had a new technology stack. You had coal, you had oil, and then cars could freely move around on easier to build roads versus having to build more, more expensive rail. And it could, you know, go go into a far more complex network than just, you know, a few lines across the country, up and down. It was all over the, the cities and made the cities bigger. And with the mass production from, from Ford, it again transformed how fast we built. And you had trucks to move things around. And trucks became the main form of transportation. You'd have rail delivering it to ports, you know, or to, to train stations, ships delivering it to ports, and then the trucks would take it everywhere else. So it's still cities being filled out. And again, the, the economy got 10 times bigger. So again, it was how much, how fast, how cheap could you move things? And how fast could you build it? So now we get to self-driving cars. We currently have 1.5 billion and getting to towards 2 billion cars in our global fleet. There are about 100,000 cars um, with uh, beta versions of self-driving, which I expect to be by Tesla, which I expect to become uh, fully developed and, and released to even a large number of people most of the 3 million people who currently have Tesla cars by the end of the year. And then as that rapidly grows out, you know, there'll be, you know, by the end of the decade, perhaps a hundred million uh, self-driving cars. So even though that's only 5% of the 2 billion cars that will be in the world at that time, they can be, the, the self-driving cars can be used five times more because you can, you know, you can drive without a driver, no, no, no driver getting tired, the utility of self-driving cars and the shift in rides will be faster than the shift in the physical cars by about five times, by as much as 10 times. And then, so then by 2032, about half of our rides should be from self-driving cars and trucks, how we move things, how we get around. And they will also then be the basis for human and robots, being able to identify and move things around which is what the self-driving cars have to do, uh, will enable us to develop the, the Tesla bot, the human and robot, which will then automate and speed up labor and will drive the cost of labor down. Self-driving cars will make it so that we have costs that are two to three times less per mile and the trucks could have costs that are five times less. So it'll be faster production. And then the, self, the Tesla bot will be built on top of that where how we see and move around will use the same neural network, the same artificial intelligence to have vision for the robots so they can see and, and understand how to move things around. Initially be in the, the factories and Tesla has digital cell management where they have scoring for people doing work on a type of task like paint. Based on our, our scan of the paint of this car, it only has a score of 53 and we need to get over 90. It'll say, take this remediation to fix this paint. Those kinds of tasks and steps and scoring can be used to train neural nets so that the bots can start replacing station by station the tasks in, in the factories. 
and then they'll be moving from there out to other factories and then out to uh, our homes and, uh, and other places around uh, our society. So what will it mean for you? Having 100 million self-driving cars by 2032 with cost per mile two times less, um, mass producing factories and trucks with costs of two kilowatts per mile or 20 cents per mile, which is less than the <clears throat> with cost per vehicle down to 20 to 25 cents per mile driven with self-driving cars. That will mean the average U.S. household instead of spending about $10,000 on transportation would have this reduced to $5,000 or less. And also the, the truck driving is delivering goods at 20 cents on the dollar means that all delivery, everything you buy from Amazon will get a price cut of 10 to 20% as the delivery component and supply chain is made five times cheaper. And this will mean um, savings in everything that you buy, uh, clothing, um, building materials, uh, food. So then you'd have an overall 20 to 30% reduction in, in your spending by having a massively more efficient transportation system. And this would boost the overall world economy by 50% or perhaps even double. Then when we get to human and robots using this technology, which will take about three to five years to develop, you know, as Tesla works on them using them in their own factories and with some early adopters. But eventually the cost of the human and robot uh, I think it's as capable as people um, would drop to the price of the materials of the, of the, of the bots, which are about one thirtieth the weight in terms of the batteries and other materials as a Model Y car. So if you could afford a Model Y car, then you could afford 30 bots. But 30 bots would basically be doing the labor of one person. So then every person could control the 30 persons worth of labor. So this would then um, multiply the, the economy by up to 30 times with um, more productivity for every person. And the person had the productivity of themselves plus 30 bots. And then if you have, so if you had, we eventually replace all cars with self-driving cars. So you have say 2 billion cars. And if you have that same level for the, for the human bots, 30 bots per car, that'd be 60 billion. You know, 2 billion cars times 30, 60 billion bots. They have 2 billion self-driving cars, 60 billion bots. If the economy was staying, um, you know, growing just to that size uh, of a car industry with the human body industry, but I think it can grow far beyond that. There's no reason that would be limited to only building the equivalent to 2 billion cars because the bots would be increasing manufacturing productivity by 30 times, 100 times. So if we manufacture more, lower the cost of everything, increase the, the availability, supply, and then demand, I think, would then increase with it. So then we'd be on this um, a virtuous cycle of increasing capability, increasing demand, increasing wealth. Um, so it would be a wealth explosion that would happen. But this would all get established this decade as, and then we get to, 100 million of the self-driving cars and perhaps into the 10 million, 100 million range for the human bots, which would initially be transforming, I think, um, manufacturing and certain other industries. And then getting uh, household bots and other bots for other services and expanding beyond that. But initially just transforming manufacturing with mass amounts of productivity would change our world and that's what's going to be established this decade establishing this decade is having all these self-driving vehicles transforming industries not all um vehicles transformed by half of all miles but clearly it's establishing that the transformations um would be well entrenched for the to get completed over the next the following decades and century so that's the, the decade will be defined by self-driving cars and humanoid bots getting firmly established and on the path to the complete transformation of our economies and give us incredible wealth. I'll go into more detail in following videos describing how the Tesla bot 
would transform uh, each industry and more about the timelines playing that out. But I have, you know, given this initial look at how it would lower the cost of labor. Um, you know, if the cost is down to $2,000 per bot, how we get down to below uh, 50 cents per hour of, of labor and how that would be completely transformational. So thanks for listening and talk to you next time.